Welcome back to part two of Marketing's webinar series on email hygiene and deliverability. My name is Kintra Hargrove, Senior Data Analyst at Marketing, and in part two of the series, we'll address spam and blacklists and the issues that they can cause for your email program. So what is spam? The technical definition of spam is unsolicited bulk email. Unsolicited means that the recipient is not granted verifiable permission for the message to be sent via opt-in or opt-out. The difference between opt-in and opt-out will be discussed later. Bulk means that the message is sent as part of a larger collection of messages, or in other words, that the email was sent as a batch to a large group of recipients. Email can be flagged as spam for various reasons, including an improperly configured email service provider, a high number of bounces or complaints, sending from a new IP or domain without gradually increasing volume to establish reputation, otherwise known as IP or domain warning, low engagement, sending to lists that contain spam traps or containing content that is widely known to be included in spam emails. Around the world, there are a few spam regulations that govern email market, how email marketers must format and solicit their emails. First, the Can Spam Act, which governs the US, requires marketers to abide by the following rules. First, don't send false or misleading information. Second, include current street address in every email. Third, provide a way to opt out of future emails and honor that request within 10 days. The CAN spam regulation is one of the less strict regulations that is allows for opt out rather than the opt in process, meaning that the recipient can be sent commercial messages without prior consent. Though this is frowned upon by mailbox providers, it is not outlawed via regulation. CASL, also known as CASTLE, governs Canada and requires recipients to either explicitly opt in to receiving email communication or have implied consent, which is considered to be a donation or purchase from an organization within the past 24 months. GDPR governs the EU and requires proof of implied opt-in consent to send each type of email communication. Now we'll discuss blacklists and how they are used. The majority of emails sent worldwide is spam. Blacklists are used as a means of sorting through legitimate email versus spam. Many mailbox providers do not accept emails from domains or IP addresses that are on blacklists, so it's imperative to avoid them at all costs. There are several types of blacklists, both public and private, with private ones being the most common. Private blacklists are usually stricter with their spam filtering. So the question is, how do you become blacklisted? And if you do, how can you be removed? You may become blacklisted through having a bad list of emails or being hacked, among other methods. If you are blacklisted, you'll likely begin receiving bounce back emails or a large number of bounces from your email campaigns. You can also search for your IP address or domain on publicly available spam lists and attempt to resolve the reason for the listing. This concludes part two of our email hygiene and deliverability series. We hope you'll tune in for part three. Thanks and have a great day.